Hello again everybody and welcome back to another edition of On The Range and today once again I'm in the A10C Warthog and I'm going to demonstrate a basic attack run using an AGM-65 Maverick guided missile. Now the AGM-65 is a topic that's going to take several videos to cover but in this first video I'm just going to demonstrate the basic controls and basic displays that are needed to, with the minimum amount of effort on the pilot's part, get the weapon onto the target. And there are a lot more techniques and a lot more controls that are available and just a lot of different ways to do this. But I'm going to show a very, very basic technique just to get things started. Now guidance is provided by a camera package in the nose. So the seeker head has a camera inside that displays a video on our, in this case I'm going to bring it up on the right hand display. And that video is what the pilot uses to search for and walk on to targets out in the distance. So we'll get into a lot more details in subsequent videos, but for now I'm just going to go through the basic steps needed to set up for an AGM-65 attack. So I'll go master arm to arm, I'll bring up my Dismas, and quick and dirty, I'll just select Station 3 and bring up the Maverick out there on my left wing. On my right hand display, I'm going to depress the Maverick OSB and then depress it again to make my Maverick sensor of interest. So now, with that as my sensor of interest, my controls that I'm going to be using on my HOTAS, stick and throttle, are going to be controlling the Maverick, which is exactly what I need to happen. Now those controls, or yeah, the basic controls that I'm going to be using this time, and there are different techniques and different ways to do this, are the slew control, and that's on my right throttle, and it's the right hand hat on the right I'm sorry, the left hand hat on the forward portion of the right throttle. So that's what I'll be using to slew the seeker around. And also on my right throttle I have the China hat. I'm going to go, if I want to recenter the Maverick, I go China hat aft short. And if I want to switch from wide field of view to narrow field of view, I go China hat forward short. And that zooms the Maverick display in. And that is where I will leave it for this demonstration. I'm going to keep this extremely simple. And I'm going to use this display down here to my right and this symbol on my HUD. When I have a Maverick selected, I have a Maverick reticule display to my HUD. And that's just a visual representation of where the Maverick's camera seeker is pointing on the ground. So right now I can see the display is pointing out there to a tree line in the distance. And I can see that on my HUD, that the reticule is pointing to that same place. So that just gives me a vis visual reference. Now on this attack run, I have some tanks out there at steer point three that I want to take out. All that I have to do is proceed towards the steer point, align this reticule on my HUD with the general vicinity of where I'm looking for targets, and then slew the Maverick Seeker over to a promising looking target once the seeker is within range and can resolve an individual target on the ground, it will automatically lock onto the target. Once that happens, I can fire the weapon. So very, very simple, very, very basic. And I'm just going to do it with slew controls, the Maverick display, and the reticule on the HUD. So as we come into the target area, I've got about, geez, 11 miles to go. I got a little bit far away there. And I will go ahead and get into the area. And I'm just going to fly the aircraft so that my reticule is in the right general area. And then I'm going to use those that slew control on my right throttle to slew the seeker. And you can see the reticule on the hub moving as I slew the seeker over. Now I'm in the area of the steer point. And when I release the slew controls, it automatically stabilizes so I don't have to keep slewing. I can just slew to the right general area, let it stabilize and then tweak from there. But I see some likely looking targets already. I'm just going to slew the seeker over into that area. And once I'm within range, and once, the, once it's able to resolve individual targets, like right there at about 6.8 miles, it's locked on. So I can see that the gates have collapsed over the target. I can see that my symbol is flashing. And at this point, all I need to do is depress and hold the weapons release switch and fire the missile. So the first missile is away and lofting into the target area and I didn't have to get anywhere near that. I fired at about I was over I was between five and six miles away so had considerable standoff, I didn't have to get into the threat area I just locked it up, fired and we will 
in about uh, 10 seconds and I'll show you all the different displays and all the different information that you get in subsequent videos but all that we need to know for now is that I just fired a missile on these targets I'm zoomed in on right now and right about now I should get an impact and there we go no further action required on my part after I had locked it up and fired fire and forget weapon from a great standoff distance So I have one more missile left, so let me demonstrate that one more time. I'm going to select the AGM-65, and now just using the Maverick reticule in the HUD and the display on my right CMDI, or MPCD, or MFCD, whatever it's actually called, I'm going to turn into the target area, align the reticule in my HUD, more or less with where I know targets are out there around that steer point, use the slew controls to fine-tune my aiming and lock onto a target and then once I'm locked on fire the missile so coming over to the targets okay I have another one locked up I have my range gate or I have my flashing symbol I have my trekking gates collapsed firing the missile and exiting the target area And again, that's very, very simple. That's all done just using a couple of displays. One control, actually, on my throttle is all that it takes. And we'll get into a lot more detail, a lot more techniques, and a lot more information in subsequent videos. So I hope you did find this useful, and stay tuned for more. And if you did enjoy this video, please do... Leave a like, leave a comment in the comment section below, and please do consider subscribing to the channel if you want to see more of this sort of, uh, sort of thing. So thanks again everybody, and I will see you next time.